Hi everyone. Welcome to today's video. Let me just get the sound in while you're all joining. We can see who's with me today. Let's have a look. Here we go. Okay guys, so I'm just going to let you get uh, join in. Um, so off the video we're going to do um, loaded nachos today. Super easy recipe. She's got a few components so that's why we've kind of got a long list. Um, but it's really easy to do. So whilst you are joining guys, good morning Colleen. Nice for you to join me today. Um, I hope you're okay today. If anybody is doing a cook along, please let me know. Um, just so I can make sure I'm giving you a few tips. I'm going to let a few more people join before we get going. So, as always, welcome to the Vegan Chef School. Um, I'm Katie. So, you can join me every Wednesday. Um, and I'm just going to do simple vegan recipes, obviously. With a bit of a twist. We're trying to do a bit more of a health conscious twist on it. Um, but sometimes there's little treats in there. So, we've got a few people joining. I've got my mama in the house today. Hello, mummy. And good morning, Justine. Oh, I'm so glad you like nachos. And we've got Lara. Good morning, Lara. Oh, good afternoon, actually. We've just turned afternoon here. Um, guys, please do let me know if you're cooking along. Um, I know some of you are in America, so you might have been making nachos for your breakfast. If you are cooking along, please pop the kettle on because you're going to need some boiled water. Preheat your oven. We want your oven to be at 180 degrees Celsius, so that's 350 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4. So we're going to have the oven on, we need some boiled water and you need to um, line some um, baking trays with parchment paper, some grease proof paper. Pop some on because when we bake these, I'm not going to add any oil, so we don't want them to stick. Um, but I'll just uh, explain that when we start the recipe. So, good morning, Day. So, Day's going to do the admin for me today. So, if I miss any questions, she'll pin them so I can see them. Because um, after yesterday's little stand up comedy session, um, I know Day missed a couple of questions. That was my fault because I was doing admin, I was too busy giggling along and forgetting that I should have been pinning questions. Um, oh Lisa, how long have you been vegan? How long have I been vegan? Um, I will have been vegan for four years in October. We kind of say October, it might have happened before then. Um, but yeah, coming up to four years now. So that was obviously a journey. We decided to go vegan overnight, so we made the switch within a 24 hour period. Um, so it took us a while maybe to get more to the whole foods um, route, which obviously is what we try to do now. I always love to make things from scratch, um, but I always describe it to people as it's just changing habits. So something like this, obviously um, nachos don't have to be a meat based dish, um, but you'll tend to get things like with chili that has meat in which I think it, obviously I think it doesn't need it, but we can bring these textures and tastes in and more health, so better for you. So I think um, some of the recipes that I tend to do are kind of that veganized recipe. Um, everyday meals, everyday snacks. I'm not trying to be chefy, these are, these are things that I make. Um, so hopefully you enjoy them. So let's get started. This recipe is using up things that I have open. So I've got, just put half a can of cooked beans on, or lentils, whatever you have. Obviously if you make it, if you um using dried, you can obviously do your own. Uh, but I just got some black eyed beans that are open. So I've got half a can that has been left over. I've got some open um, sweet corn, I've got half a jar of passata, I've got an opened um, 
tub of yogurt. So these kind of things, especially now when we're struggling to get our ingredients, um, I'm trying to create recipes that even though this is what I'm saying, you use what you've got, like what Day did yesterday. Obviously you needed the mushrooms to make the mushroom mince, but add vegetables in, same with the curries, mix it up to use whatever you've got. Um, so for example, with this thing, um, with this recipe, it's not a chili, it's a chili style topping. So it's a base, these are basic ingredients that are going to give you that chilli taste without all the sauce, without all the cooking down, all the extra veg because this is just, um, this is like um, a snack really. Obviously it could be a little bit of a meal but this is more of a snack if you're having a, me um, a movie night, a date night, something fun. Um, so use whatever beans you've got. With the making the chips, these are just tortilla wraps, well, they're not tortilla wraps because it's with flour. These are just wraps that I've made um, and saved them, so I'm going to use them up. We're going to bake them to make um, our chips. If you've already got a bag of tortilla chips, obviously use that. For the cheese, the natural cheese, this is a really simple cheese recipe um, that I use for lots of different things. I might mix it up and add little bits of you know, smoked paprika or a bit of chilli to do something different, but today it's really simple, really easy, um, and each component's going to uh, complement each other, so we're going to bring different tastes with different things. So let's just double check who we have. So, good morning, Louise. Yes, from New York City. Is it sunny in New York now? How is it in New York? I've never been to New York, it's on the wish list. Hello Sue, I've got Mandy with us today, good morning sis. Hi Paul, and we've got Denise, hello Denise. So thank you all for signing in today. Hi Hope, I've just seen that you've signed in today. I'll just reiterate what I've said guys, if any of you want to cook along, um, please make sure you have Boil some water in the kettle, you need your oven on to preheat it to 180 degrees, that's 350 Fahrenheit, gas mark 4, um, and you need to have at least two baking trays lined with parchment paper, greaseproof paper, um, so we can get them straight. So let's get going today guys. Hi Virginia, thank you for joining us today. So. I have got some leftover wraps, I forgot, I've got four wraps. So let's get the wraps on and then we'll start the cheese. Just move these out of the way. So, super simple, we're literally going to cut them in half. And cut them in half again. This knife's not the best. And then go again. So that's going to cut each wrap into eight triangles. Nice and easy. And then we're going to pop them onto the baking tray. Oh, it's not a bean pirate. <laughs> it's a bit of a dodgy drawing today. <laughs> I'm actually going to be really impressed if anybody gets it. Um, I kind of have given you a clue already, but keep guessing. Please don't let me forget to tell you at the end if you don't guess it, and I'm really sorry for my bad drawing. Please don't <laughs> judge me, I'm not claiming to be an artist. So, if you wanted to make um, tortilla chips, not to put anything on top, um, you can, and you want to use them say for a dip, you could squeeze some lime juice and sprinkle with salt. If you wanted to, you could brush them with oil and lime juice and salt. Um, the oil is just going to make them cook a little bit faster. Depending, obviously I've made these myself, if you're using shop bar, um, there's going to be different um, moisture content and fat content. So these are probably going to take, I don't know, it's 20 15, 20 minutes um, to bake. They might take, uh, it might happen quicker with, if you put oil on, it might take a bit longer. 
depending on how thick, how nice the um, wraps are. So you're just going to keep checking them. So what I'm going to do, I'll pop a timer on for 10 minutes, we'll pop it in the oven, and then 10 minutes I'm going to flip them over. When you take them out of the oven, I'm going to give them 20 minutes today, when you take them out of the oven, they might not feel crisp, they're going to crisp up as they cool down. So the important thing to do when you are lining your tray is to make sure they are not on top of each other. It's a bit like a mosaic. You need to have good spatial awareness and I don't have it. It's where Jay comes in, into play, helps me out with stuff like this. Um, so, super simple, we've cut them into triangles and then we're going to pop them on the tray. We've got a smaller one. This is probably going to make um, enough for two, you might have a few left over. I'm just going to pop this here. Uh, let's just double check guys. No, it's literally right. Yellowies, I made the wraps myself so they're not gluten free, they're just um, plain flour, water, hot water, baking powder and uh, two teaspoons of oil and a bit of salt. So when I made them, I could share the recipe if you want them, um, like I said they're not gluten free though. So I made a batch of 10 um, and these are just left over, I'd use them to make some burritos. Um, so let's just separate that. But they're really easy to make. I always make my own wraps and flatbreads. Um, just because they're so easy to make. And you can control how much salt's in there, how much oil's in there, if you want it or you don't want it. You can add some extra little bit, bits of flavor in. Um, but I know a couple of you guys following the Vegan Chef School and Dee does obviously all of her gluten free recipes. Um, so maybe I could try to adapt it if you did want some gluten free ones. Um, right then, so we've got our wraps spread out on our tray and I'm going to pop them in the oven and we're going to pop a timer on. I'll double check where everyone is with questions and comments and then we'll carry on. So they're going in. start it because I do like to set the timer and then never press start. It's a nice trick that I like to do. So let me just double check. <laughs> oh professional rainbow finder. Colleen you're almost there. Uh, yeah, Bridget, I'll share the wrap recipe. I'll pop it in. Um, I'll pop it on the community group. Uh, please post a recipe. So I'll post it. Yes, definitely, I'll post that recipe, guys. Um, and I will have a play around and try to make. Uh, Day will probably have some better gluten-free bread recipes than me. Um, I'm a bit hit and miss when I try to do them um, gluten-free. So I use a lot of bran flour in my recipes, um, but I can play around and try and make some gluten-free ones. We can do that, we can always do that. I always like to experiment. Um, but yeah, I'll share that recipe. I'll post it in the community group. If you haven't joined the community group, please do. If you are new to our vegan chef school, um, all of our recipes get shared onto the community group, plus we have fantastic members on there who share their recipes. Lots of you have signed up to the um, today's uh, Vegan Chef School courses and you're sharing all of your wonderful meals and creations. It's really inspiring, you'll get lots of ideas, you'll get lots of support um, and it's, welcome, it's welcoming to lots of people. Not everybody in there is fully vegan. Um, we are not here to judge people, we are here to promote a vegan lifestyle and a vegan diet in a really kind way and to support each other. Um, so, 
Yeah. Thank you for your comments today, guys. Right, so let's get on to, we're gonna boil. I did this for anybody that's cooking along because if you forget to soak your cashew nuts and you want to make some cheese, don't worry about it. You can pop them on to a boil just to soften them up um, for about 10, 15 minutes. We're gonna do 10 minutes today. So I've got a half a cup and it works out about 70 grams of cashew nuts if you don't use the cups. So we're gonna pop them in. I've already boiled the kettle before the video. No, sorry, before I started the video. So, I'm gonna do half a cup. This is gonna make quite a lot. You might have some left over. Depends how much you like to put on. Um, but if you do have some left over, just pop it in a bowl, pop the lid on, keep it in the fridge for a few days, use it when you need it. I'm just gonna grab the kettle, guys. So you're gonna pop um, your cashew nuts into a small pan and we're just going to cover them with water. So plenty of water. Don't worry about having too much. And then we're just going to get that on a high heat. I'm hoping if I keep the pan there that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to keep that on a high heat and I'm going to let it get to boiling point. Um, and then I'll turn it down. We're going to keep it high because we want it on like a high simmer. Um, we don't want to keep boiling them. Um, but yeah, let's get it boiling and then we'll turn it down. So, let <laughs> me just check. Yeah, it's a black eyed bean. <laughs> it's been boxing, that's why it's got a black eye. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed that you guessed that, guys. <laughs> oh, we start with our jokes. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to pin some questions if the jokes start. Right, so let's get on with our chilli topping. So I've got lots of leftovers that we're going to use up. So I'm going to pop my pan on just to heat it up. Get that on a low heat just while it's heating up. And we're going to fry off, well, not fry fry, we're going to put a little bit of oil in. These are non-stick pans, they are green pans. Uh, but just because I want them to cook a little bit faster, I'm going to put a teaspoon of oil into my... Um, to cook my onions and garlic. I um, want them to get like translucent and a little bit caramelised because I, like we've mentioned before that's just going to bring some sweetness in. Um, so let's get cooking, let's get chopping and pop the oil in once this is done. I did put avocado on my recipe guys but I don't think this is ripe enough so if it's not We'll talk through what you need to do, but I might not use mine. So we're going to chop an onion. We're going to use a full onion. Uh, doesn't matter if it's white or red. Doesn't really matter on the size. Just chop an onion, pop it in. We're going to uh, dice it. Not too fine. Uh, I'm just going to take this outer layer off. <laughs> uh, guys, I'm impressed with all your, your food jokes. I'm so rubbish at jokes. Right, so, slicing down the middle. easier to cook to cook 
better and safer with a sharp knife. I'm just going to turn this down a little bit, guys. So we're, we're bubbling now. So we're going to keep it on a simmer. And I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer. It doesn't really matter. We don't have to time it perfectly. Um, I'll double check the comments in a second, guys. I'm trying to get these onions on. So we're going to put a teaspoon of oil in. This is a half teaspoon measure, so I'm just going to pop two of these in. So I've got a teaspoon of oil in. There's nothing fancy about this recipe. It's super easy. We're going to chuck things in. Um, if you wanted to make this more of a meal and maybe do like, I don't know, loaded sweet potatoes, you could bulk this out into a proper chilli. So we could add a few more um, vegetables. So you could add some peppers, you could add some tomatoes. Um, I'm using some sweet corn to garnish. So you could add some mushrooms, you could really load it out. I'm just gonna turn this up a little bit and I'll show you the pan once we get cooking, I'll show you the onion, sorry, before we carry on. So, for the garlic, I'm gonna use pestle and mortar for the garlic, because I like, with something like this, uh, where it's more of, um, don't know how to say, it's like it's not really that saucy, it's, like I said, it's not a full on chili. So, I want as much flavor to come through as possible. So, like when we made the curry paste, when we mash, the ingredients up, or whisk them in a food blender, or uh, mash them with um, a, a pestle and mortar, you're gonna just get that flavor throughout rather than little chunks of flavor. So that's what I want to happen today. I'm just gonna turn that down a little bit because that back one gets hot. Let me just double check and then what where we're up to. And then I will get on with this. So I'm gonna do three cloves of garlic. Again, put as many as you want in. You don't need to have three, you can have more than three if you want. I do like a lot of garlic, but I will hold it back for this. So all we're gonna do, I'm just gonna peel the outside off, pop it in the pestle and mortar, and mash it up. Do, 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 do. So I've got Jade with it and I've got all in. Hi guys. Thank you for joining me today. Right, so we've got our 10 minute marker for our tortillas. Let's flip those over and we'll set that off again. I'll have to do it one at a time, guys. I've not got a lot of space, but that doesn't matter. So, Those out there browning up really nicely. So, let me just flip these over, guys, and pop them back in. Oh, they're super crispy already. So, actually, I'm going to put them in just for another few minutes. So, like I said, because these are homemade, there's not a lot of oil in, there's not a lot of moisture in. So can we see, these are browned up really nice. So I'm not going to let them go any further actually. Let me pop them down and I'll show you properly. So 10 minutes it was with my, I guess those, a few of these aren't fully brown but I don't think that matters. They're starting to go golden. So I'm going to let them cool while we make everything else. Let's just grab a couple of them so can we see. And they're actually crispy already. Perfect. That was nice and easy. So, turn that down. Let me just mix those onions. So can we see guys, we're starting to caramelize, get a little bit of that. 
so we just knock that beat down and we will mash our garlic and pop that in. I hope it's sunny where you all are today because it's beautiful here today and I think we're in for a good sunny few days so I'm looking forward to that. So I hope you get to enjoy some sunshine too. Right, so we've got our garlic in and we're just going to mash. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put, if you wanted to, if you're going to mash it, if instead of adding my salt into here, I'm going to add it into here. And just, it's going to add that extra like kind of gritty um, consistency to help um, mash the garlic, but also just bring out some moisture. So I'm going to do half a teaspoon of salt. So salt is always to your taste. Add as much or as little as you want. This does not have to have salt in. There is some salt in my tortillas and obviously if you're buying shop bought one, using shop bought ones, they're definitely going to have salt in. Um, and we're going to add miso into the cheese. So we need to be careful that we're not going too salty. But also that is to each, each of our tastes because we've all got different palettes. Oh, we've got a nacho joke finished. <laughs> going all out with this joke, guys. Fully committed to it. So, let's just scrape this off and we're going to just pop the garlic straight in. Pop that in. Make sure you give this a good wash after, obviously. Especially using a stone one. Um, the garlic's just going to stay in there. I just let them soak for a little bit. Um, we use ours every day because we grind our flaxseed up by hand every day. Um, and the flaxseed doesn't taste of garlic so it won't stay in there if you just give it a good rinse. So let me just pop that in some water now. Dry my hands. Oh yeah, I'm just glad you've got some sunshine, guys. Yeah, so you're not too far from me. Because I'm, even though I'm in Manchester, I'm close to the Pennines. Hi Claire, thank you for joining. So, we've got our garlic in. Yeah, so I'm just on the other side of the Pennines. So we love going for walks up there. I do want to do the um, the full Pennine walk. I've just not got around to it. So let me just scrape that salt out of there that's been stuck in there. So we've got our garlic and salt. I'm going to put spices in next. So with spices, let me just rinse this oil off here. With spices, again, it's to your taste. With chilli, you're going to want the tomato, you're going to want a little bit of chilli, it doesn't have to have heat to it, and you're going to want a bit of smokiness, and the cumin is just going to add that chilli flavour to it. So they're the key components that I want to keep in. So, I'm going to go with half a teaspoon of chilli, so don't forget this is a half a teaspoon measure. Um, as much or as little chilli as you want. This is a hot chilli, so this is going to bring a bit of spice to mine. So I'm not going to um, add any chopped chillies to the top. I'm going to go one teaspoon of cumin. And half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. If you don't have smoked paprika, you could use liquid salt. Just to bring some smokiness through. So this is just really dry now. I'm just going to let them heat through. And 
going to add the tomato puree. So I'm going to do a tablespoon of tomato puree just to make it a little bit richer. Because I'm not adding any tomatoes in, it's just going to intensify that tomato flavour. Um, so it's a bit of a cheat, really. So, tablespoon of... Sorry, guys, if I'm looking down there, I'm just checking your comments. I'm not just going into a taste. Mix this through. We're going to go tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. You can use balsamic vinegar if you don't have apple cider vinegar. And then we'll pop our cassata in. So the beans are already cooked, so I'm not bothered about cooking the beans. We are just going to heat them through so they can go in last minute. So we're going to add some passata in for our liquid. So I'm going to go with four tablespoons. Um, you can go less or more if you want it to be thicker or have a little bit more sauce. Don't forget, we're going to keep it on the heat. I'm going to pop the lid on on the pan so it doesn't give too much moisture. Um, so when we add the beans, the beans are not going to be fully coated. Like I said, this is not a chili. This is just a topping for our um, nachos. So we need to be able to see the beans. So we're going to add the tomato sauce scattered through with the beans. Um, and then the cheese and the toppings. So, let's just get that off there. Oh, sorry, Colleen. I keep forgetting. If you, if I say something you don't know what I'm talking about, please ask and I will try to, the best of my American knowledge, share what it is in America. I did live in Australia for a little bit, so they tend to use American terms. Um, so I might know a few more than I think. You should test me. I'm not actually done. <laughs> no, you can. Right, so let's get our cheese going. So I'm going to drain our cashews. So there's not really much to show you. The water just becomes a little cloudy. Um, these are whole cashews as well, and like we said, what we probably had, I had them on for 20, uh, 15 minutes. Um, I normally use cashew pieces, so they're going to go a bit faster. Um, but you don't really have to time it, we just want them to soften up, so we can't really go too much. We just we could go um, not enough. So yeah, let me just drain these. So I'm not bothered about keeping any moisture. I'm gonna use a blender today and it's quite a big blender because I've got a new blender for my birthday. Um so this is why I'm just making a bit of a, <clears throat> a bigger batch that we'll use. But obviously, like I said, you might have some left. Shouldn't have too much left. Um, and um, you can use a blender. You can use a food processor. Blenders are obviously better. Um, and you can use the hand blender. I haven't got, um, you know, like Day uses that narrow uh, kind of jug. I need to get some of them because I've only got a glass jug. So I don't want to use that. Um, Otherwise, I would have done the hand blending. So, yeah, I'm going to use my blender today. But like I said, if you've got a food processor or a hand blender, you can also use that. Just make sure if you're using the hand blender, you've got it in um, an appropriate container. So, we've got our cashews in. We're going to go with a tape. No, we'll go with um, this. Let me just rinse the spoon again. So, we'll go nutritional yeast first, which is going to bring our cheesy taste as uh, along with the miso because miso has got a cheesy taste and I always get the nutritional yeast with B12 so I'm adding some B12 into this and then we'll go with our miso I think I'm down to my last tablespoon so with your miso 
with your uh, with the miso it has to be a dark miso because we don't want that sweet flavor we want um we want that umami salty flavor um same principle as what um you used for Dave's recipe yesterday we don't want the sweetness through this this is going to be our cheese taste so we're going to go with a tablespoon of miso and I absolutely love miso I love it miso is your alternative if you can't get um, um, the yeast extract that we also use in some of our flavours but the yeast extract is more of the salty meaty kind of flavour to something whereas miso's got that fermented cheesy taste which I absolutely love. I'm just going to move this rubbish out of the way. So we've got our nuts, miso and um, nutritional yeast. So for our milk, I ever put how much milk on because when I make it, I never measure it. So when I came to come to write it down, I thought, oh, I actually don't know how much liquid I put in. So we're going to find out together. Let's put in, let me just wipe that, turmeric. Optional, this is just to bring the yellow colour in. Um, I know some people are sensitive to the taste, but we're just going to add some in. Um, Turmeric's got some good health properties as well too. So any of these little things that we can get in, just pop them in. As long as you like them, it's all just going to be extra flavour, extra colour, extra texture, extra nutrition. So let's go, I'll tell you what, we'll use... I'm just going to do 150 mils. Let's have a look. I want it to cover the nuts. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go 150. I'm going to blend it. We want it to be like a thick liquid. So obviously we want to be able to pour this over the nachos. You want to be able to dip it and scoop it. So we need that fine line of it being kind of fluid but thick. So... Let's pop this on and we'll see. I'll pop the lid on. My blender's just off shot, guys. So I am just going to pop it on. I'm going to pop the blender on, give it a quick whiz up, and then I'll show you. So let's see what we get from this. Sorry if it's loud, it won't be one second. <laughs> say can we just see on that that's a bit too runny so let's go 100 mils of plant milk I will add that to the recipe it can be a bit runny on mine if you make your cheese and it's too runny all you're gonna have to do is buy a few more cashews and add them in so it's not the end of the world um I would just like that a bit thicker so let's go maybe when you mix it up do 75 mils of milk mix it through, blend it up, then you can always add more if you need it. Obviously you can't take it away once you put it in. So, lesson learned, we're gonna go 75 to 100 mils of milk. I've used oat milk, you can use any plant milk. Um, I just like the creaminess of oat milk for this. So, we can add our beans in. Let me pop this to one side and I'll grab that when we need it. We can add our beans into our chilli, so we've got a thick tomato chilli there, where's my beans? So we've got half a can of black eyed beans that we're going to mix through. I'm actually going to mix some through and I'm going to save some to scatter on top. So we're going to have some that are tomato in and, oh, splash myself in the eye. Some that are tomato it and some that are just loosely scattered around our nachos. I'm actually going to just add a little tablespoon of this because I've let it go a little bit thick. So you could add some extra, like I said before, you could even add some water if you wanted to. Um, it's better. 
Yeah, so it, Mandy, it is gonna thicken up just because we're just gonna let some moisture out. And I'm not, obviously, whilst I'm doing this and that, I'm kind of not timing what, what's going on with this. And like I said, because, so that's how thick it is, because I'm not making, um, I'm not making the sauce, so yeah, it is gonna thicken up. So just like what I've done there, if you need to, add some extra liquid in. Passato or water, it doesn't matter. Um, same principle, just go a tablespoon at a time so we're not going too much. If you do go too much, just keep heating it without the lid on, let it evaporate away. So, let's make our loading nachos. Let me just move these. And let's get a bowl. I'll tell you what, before I do the bowl actually, let's chop some, I'm gonna chop this pile of coriander up because if I've got some extra, I'm just gonna keep it in my little container and pop it in the fridge. So, roll, gather them up in like a cigar shape. It's a bit harder with loose leaves. Um, I'm gonna chop down all the way to the end and then just chop roughly over the top. It doesn't matter. We just want it roughly chopped. I'm just going to sprinkle on top. So for this, um, obviously for the garnish as well, I haven't wrote, written the garnish on there because this is whatever you want. I'm going to add some yogurt onto the top of mine instead of making the sour cream just because it's natural yogurt and it's got that sour flavour. So it's not going to be loads of yogurt. We're going to add the creaminess of the cheese and then we're going to add little pops of yogurt to add some sourness. So let me just double check. Oh, sorry, man. No, the cheese sauce isn't going to thicken up because I'm not going to heat it. Um, obviously, yeah, if you popped it on the pan, it might thicken up. Um, if you if you wanted to heat it up um, and it wasn't thickening up, add a teaspoon of um, um, corn flour to and keep whisking, obviously, to get rid of the lumps. Um, but the corn flour with the heat will thicken it because it isn't a lot of liquid, so don't go too heavy with the corn flour. Or tapioca, if that's what you've got. Tapioca doesn't need the heat, so um, either or should work. So let me turn that off the heat. Let me just double check. Are we talking about onions? We've got any questions now? <laughs> Where do you want to go, Dave? <laughs> Are you planning trips without me? I want to go on a trip. Ooh, let's have a food trip when we're allowed. Um, right, let's get this going. Let me move this out of the way. Let's bring... I'll tell you what, I'll pop, I'll pop all these on one. So we've got a big, huge tray of tortilla chips. I'm not going to eat these all by myself, don't worry. So these are nice and crispy, look. Nice crispy chips. So, not put anything on these. They taste a little bit salty because there's salt in them already. And um, like I said, if you wanted these to have flavour and you didn't want to use oil, use something like lemon or lime juice before you cook them. Sprinkle them with salt, pepper, chilli, whatever you want, and then you're gonna have a bit of extra flavour on. So, let's do this. I'm gonna pop some in here. <laughs> I'm getting a school out I'm a teacher and I just love a school trip. It pops up the side so you can scoop and then we'll fill the middle. Go with our B 
steam chili. Down the middle. I'll move these out of the way and then you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to scrape all this out. I agree, Paul. School trips were always the best day at school. Always. So, we have got... I'm going to drizzle the cheese sauce on and then I'm going to add all the extra toppings. So, don't forget, this is a little bit runnier than we would like. But it's still going to taste fantastic. Well, it needs to be a little bit thicker. I wonder if you can see inside. So it's not going to make loads. Um, probably enough for two bowls. But like I said, keep it um, keep it in the fridge in the tub. Use it up whenever you need. I'm just going to use a oh, I've got a tablespoon. I'm going to use a tablespoon just because there's a little bit of liquid in the bottom of this. So I'm using up some of my leftover corn. Oh. Don't throw it on the floor. Let's go two tablespoons of sweet corn. Let's put some extra beans on so we can see, without seeing the chilli that we have got black eyed beans. Any beans will go with this. In our chilli, we're going to go with a drizzle of our yoghurt for that sour taste as a, com uh, as a comparison to bring the contrast, the creaminess. So we're just going to drizzle some yoghurt on. This is just a uh, natural soy yoghurt, so no sweetness at all. So like I said, also there's a bit of heat in the chilli because I've used a hot chilli powder. Some yoghurt, avocado if you've got it, like I said this is rock hard, so I know you probably know how to cut an avocado, you're going to slice the knife around, you're going to twist the avocado, you're going to use the knife to get your seed out and then you're going to slice inside the avocado, doesn't matter if you're going to make little cubes or strips and then scoop it out, pop it on top. And, oh, I'm so glad you like the look of them. And final touch, guys, sprinkle of herbs. I've mentioned this before, but I just think when you are, especially a few of you guys, you're getting really good at taking pictures of your food and it just looks fantastic. Extra little bit of garnish go a long way so you could put some um, chilli flakes on for a little pop of red. But green, I just love putting green on top of food because it just makes it look so much nicer. So there you go guys, we've got some loaded nachos. So we've got, do I have to eat it on camera and not make a mess? Let's go with that one. A little scoop. That was so good. You've got the creaminess, you've got the sour, you've got some spice from the chilli. Jalapenos definitely suit to go on top. I haven't got any. Also pickles. I love putting pickles in anything. Don't know if everyone else is with me on the pickle. But yeah, anything. Especially pickled jalapeno. That would be beautiful. So, I think that that's everything for today, guys. Have we got any last minute questions? <laughs> Oh, you don't have to be soy yoghurt, George, just whatever vegan yoghurt you can get, as long as it's not a sweetened yoghurt. Um, maybe we can just double check some American brands, I'm not sure what's out there. Um, oh, great idea, Day, making your own yoghurt. Maybe so that's something that we could do as a video. Thank you so much today, guys. Um, another recipe using up some of our leftovers. This is just the perfect treat. It's a little bit naughty, but it's also really nice. You don't have to feel guilty having this. Um, we're using whole foods. 
we are not um, unless obviously you're buying some tortillas but that's fine um, we're using our own recipes we're trying to make everything from scratch we're trying to reduce our waste um, when I share the um, tortilla recipe the wrap recipe you can keep them in the freezer um, I'm not sure how long for but I've kept them in for a good couple of weeks and then just make sure you defrost them properly before you use them um, and then just warm them back up in the oven um, just for a couple of minutes sprinkle a little bit of water on them just so they um, steam a little bit or you can pop them in the microwave and do the same so once they're fully defrosted um, pile them up on a plate just sprinkle a little bit of water a couple of minutes in the microwave or not even a couple of minutes 30 seconds in the microwave and they're just going to steam and come soft again um, but yeah I think that's everything today guys so don't forget aprons are now available on the chef's school website um, I will post the method for today's video on the community group and I'll just I'll put a comment of just the tweaks that I've done today so I'll put a comment about the milk and I'll just maybe mention about just adding some extra moisture if that's what you need into the sauce um, I haven't shared a new blog today but I'll get a blog post up um, maybe today or tomorrow and I will share that through Pinch of Kindness so I've got my own blog page where I share my recipes so you can find me at pinchofkindness.com or find me on Instagram um, at Pinch of Kindness so I've never really described my page to you guys so it is obviously about vegan food but it's also just about the vegan lifestyle as a whole um, I've mentioned right at the beginning that I'm a children's yoga instructor so my job normally is going into schools um, and I work with children that have um, autism and um, some children with mental health problems or mental illness should I say. Um, so we talk a lot about managing our emotions and creating a positive mindset and looking after our mind and body so that's something that I think is so important and that I try to do in my own life. Um, and I think it goes hand in hand with the food we're eating and the way we treat our bodies and the way we treat each other and the way we treat the planet. So my page kind of is all of that rolled into one. Um, and I have only just started it, so it is growing. There is, um, there's mainly recipes on there, but over these next few weeks, I'm going to be sharing a few more, maybe personal blogs that will help you get to know me a little bit more um, because I've, love to get to know you guys through this you are so kind and like i've said you inspire us um to want to do more and to want to get the message out there and want to connect so we really 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 appreciate you watching um and we appreciate all of your comments and we're just so happy that you're all now part of the vegan chef school so thank you so much and I don't think we've got any more questions, so I will show you one last view of your yummy vegan nachos, and I'll see you next week, guys. I hope you have a lovely week, and next week, it's a secret, I've got a birthday in the house, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to do something birthday themed next week, so I've got to keep it a secret, um, because we don't want him to find out, okay? So... I will release the recipe early, so maybe we can do a cook along. Leave it with me, I need to figure out what I'm going to do first. But thank you for today, and I'll see you next week.